The Journey of Joseph and Mary from the book The Word Made Flesh by George Carey. The marvelous story of the journey of Joseph and Mary to Jerusalem to pay their taxes, physiologically explained. On either side of the thalamus in the head is a gland known in physiology as pineal on the posterior and pituitary on the anterior side of the thalamus. The pineal is cone-shaped and secretes a yellow or golden fluid. The pituitary body opposite it is ellipsoid in shape and contains a whitish secretion like milk. The fluids that are found in both of these come from the same source, namely the colostrum, which means barrier or cloister, and is referred to as a cloister for a very good reason, that a precious and holy thing is secreted or secluded there. Saint Claus or Santa Claus is another term for this precious fluid, which is indeed a holy gift in the body of each of us. The word derives from Latin meaning a hidden space uh, or enclosed space, and that is because the structure itself is enclosed within a lot of white matter tracts or axon fibers within, within the brain, making it very, very difficult to access. The precious fluid which flows down from the clostrum, clostrum separates, part going into the pineal gland and part into the pituitary body. And these being special laboratories of the head differentiate the fluid from the colostrum, and it takes on the colors above mentioned. And in the pineal gland becomes yellow and has electric properties. The pituitary body, having the milk-like fluid, has magnetic properties. These two glands are the male and female, the Joseph and Mary of the physical body, and are the parents of the spiritual son born in the solar plexus of each human being commencing about the age of 12. This yellow and white material, which is the milk and honey referred to in the Bible, the children of Israel having been given the promise of a return to this land flowing with milk and honey, at last reaches the solar plexus via semilunar ganglia, the Bethlehem of the physical body. In Hebrew, Bethlehem means house, Beth, of bread, Lahem. I am the bread of life. In the solar plexus is a thimble-shaped depression, a cave or manger, and in this is deposited the psychophysical seed or holy child born of this immaculate conception. This psychophysical seed is also called fish as it has the odor of fish and is formed in the midst of the waters, the pure water. Jesus is a fish in the midst of the waters. Quote from St. Augustine. Before birth, the human fetus floats like a fish in the fluids by which it is surrounded. And as it is with the child formed on the generative plane, so it is with the spiritual child born in the solar plexus, the Bethlehem. Joseph and Mary, by furnishing the material of the spiritual child, was to redeem the child or body formed in generation, paid the symbolic redemption money. Holy Ghost, Greek for breath. The breath, descending the pneumogastric nerve into the solar center, enters the manger where Joseph and Mary are, and where is Jesus, the seed literally, conceived by the Holy Ghost. There is an automatic procedure within the human body which, if not interfered with, will do away with sickness, trouble, sorrow, and death, as stated in the Bible. Truly, mankind, or the natural man, seeks many ways and means to prevent the upright, perfect, automatic way from accomplishing that whereunto it was sent. The natural man forever seeks pleasurable sensation, which is at enmity with God. Physical sensation, the pleasures of sin, for a season or limited duration, referred to by Paul, are under the law, or below the solar plexus. Hence, he that is led by the Spirit is not under the law. Any act coming under the meaning of sin retards or prevents the automatic action of the seed, which, if not interfered with, lifts up a portion, one-tenth, of the life essence, oil or secretion, that constantly flows down the spinal cord, a straight and narrow way, and transmutes it, thus increasing its power manyfold and perpetuating the body indefinitely, or until the ego desires to dissolve it by rates of motion set in action by its inherent will. If allegories of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as well as Paul's epistles and acts of the apostles teach anything, they teach the mastery and transmutation of the human body by anyone who obeys the physiological guidebook, the whole book, the holy book. Man has turned the mighty power he possesses to every object and principle of force in the universe except himself, the greatest miracle of all. When man focuses his divine thinking lens upon himself, he will realize that he is the epitome of unlimited cosmic energy. The fluid, oil, or marrow which flows down the spinal cord comes from the upper brain, the creator or father, the most high, and is known in physiology as ovum or generative seed that life essence which creates the human form of corruptible flesh. In Greek, from which the New Testament was translated, this marrow is called Christ, which is the Greek word for oil. When this oil is refined, transmuted, lifted up, raised, it becomes so highly vitalized that it regenerates the body and overcomes the last enemy, death. How can it be lifted up? By lifting up the Son of Man, the seed, the Word, the Savior. The oil, or Christ, Christos, in the spinal cord, is the salt which is mentioned in the Bible. The Savior is the seed, or Jesus, Jesus. The salt and the Savior both come from the same source, the same place, the Father, the upper brain. In the Bible allegory, the seed, Jesus, is made to say, Without my Father, I can do nothing. The material from the Father which forms the seed has gone through a different process from that which forms the oil. The chemical formula of the oil is J-O-H-N, and Jesus was baptized or anointed of John, not by John, as it is incorrectly quoted. If we lift up or raise the oil in the spinal cord, by the power of the seed, by saving it, 
it must be a physiological and chemical operation within the body of each of us. Such is the case. There is no mystery, no marvel in all the universe that is greater than man himself. Man, know thyself, in quotes, confronts us down through the ages, but only a few have paid attention to the voice of the Delphic Oracle. Only a few have looked within. There is a wonderful, straight and narrow way, a real straight, not straight, which extends from the upper brain, the cerebrum, to the end of the spinal cord, otherwise named Jordan in the Bible. We find that the meaning of this Hebrew word is descender or river of God. The straight and narrow way is indeed the river of God, for it leads to the Father, the Most High, the upper brain. In Bible terminology, the solar plexus also means manger, cave, Bethlehem, for it is the center of this plexus of nerves that we find the thimble-shaped cavity or depression from which issues forth the redeemer of the Adam man. In a dual sense, it is the house of bread, as it is the place where the divine bread or seed is formed, and it lies directly back of the house of material bread, the stomach. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word or seed that cometh from the mouth of God. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and this word means in Hebrew, house, Beth, or bread, lachem. See how wonderfully the Hebrew words express the true meaning of the hidden truth. I am the bread of life. In the central part of the head is the wonderful chamber or bed called the thalamus. Santee's Anatomy of the Brain and Spinal Cord describes it thus. It is the great ganglion of the inner brain. The thalamus is an important sensory relay station. Its medial part is concerned with smell and its lateral part with common sensation and taste. According to Head and Holmes, it is also an organ of consciousness or impulses of pain and temperature. The third ventricle separates the thalami from each other, except at the middle point where they are joined by the massa intermedia. The thalamus is situated behind and medial to the corpus stratum and projects backwards over the midbrain. The thalamus is shaped like an egg with the small end forward. It measures four centimeters in length and 2.5 centimeters in width and thickness. It has an interior and posterior extremity of four surfaces, superior, inferior, medial, and lateral. The most striking statement in the above paragraph is that the thalamus is egg-shaped and we can readily see why there's so much reference made in ancient religions to the egg. For the thalamus with its adjacent appendages, when viewed in cross-section of the brain, looks exactly like a beetle, the body egg shaped, and the horns of the lateral ventricle typifying the horns of the beetle. In the scarabaeus of Egypt, or scarab, it is exemplified the egg of immortality, the light of the world. It is the chamber, the holy of holies, where is concealed the Ark of the Covenant. In the Egyptian Book of the Dead, we find this referred to as the boat of Seker. Every religion which has existed down through the ages has told in its own terminology the same story, the same physiological process taking place within the body of man. On the posterior side of the thalamus, we find the pineal body. It is a cone-shaped body, six millimeters high and four millimeters in diameter, joined to the roof of the third ventricle by a flattened stalk, the habenula. Santee tells us that the interior of the pineal body is made up of closed follicles surrounding by ingrowths of connective tissue. The follicles are filled with epithelial cells mixed with calcareous or lime matter the brain sand, Arsiculeus cerebri. Calcareous deposits are found also on the pineal stalk and along the choroided plexus. The upper section of the pineal body is the optic or the eye, the, in quotes, all-seeing eye. It is the wonderful light of the candle which give light to the whole house. This pineal body is male spiritual organ. Side note, the pineal gland is uh, one of two places in the human body that has what they call piezoluminescent cells, which are cells that are, uh, they're not round, they are sharp and crystalline, jagged. The retina of the eye, has these cells as well as the pineal gland. And the pineal gland has them because it takes in light with these cells and it also reflects, refracts, and emits light with these cells. So the light moving around the optic thalamus in the brain as the electricity through the chemical wetting initiates a vibration of the pineal gland. This light emits from the pineal gland and actually this is where we get the term enlightenment. In esoteric as well as physiological meaning, this is Joseph, meaning to increase the father of Jesus, the seed, the redeemer. It is the organ through which the electrical forces of the body play. It is, in other words, one of the differentiators of that, the universal essence deposited, materialized in the cerebrum, the upper brain. In medieval Hebrew, as quoted from the sacred books of the East, is referred to as the crystalline dew from heaven deposited in the cranium. The marvelous symbology of our own Bible is duplicated in all ancient scriptures, in all the nations of the world. Some of this wonderful essence, this father, flows down from the upper brain into the pineal body, where it is differentiated, becomes masculine, positive, electrical, in quality and action. On the other side of the thalamus is located the pituitary body, the feminine spiritual organ. It is a small reddish elliptoid organ in a depression of the sphenoid bone and is attached to the brain by a pentacle. It has two lobes, one of yellowish gray and the other reddish gray in color. It secretes a mucus or a phlegm and the latter substance is what's given its name. It also receives the secretion from the father, the universal essay, E-S-S-E, the undifferentiated substance from which all things are brought forth. Following into this gland, it becomes magnetic, feminine, 
in its quality and action. It is the mare, Mary, pure sea or water, the mother of the holy child. The pineal gland is directly referred to in the Bible as Mount Pineal, where Jacob rested with the angel of the Lord. In Hebrew, the word means face of God. It is indeed the face of God. The top of this gland being the eye. Where can the eye be located? Save in the face. Side note, the story of Jacob's ladder, where he rested and he saw angels coming up and down, descending up and down the ladder, is also just another reference to the human body. Jacob's ladder, the ladder is actually the spine, the 33 steps or rungs of the human spine. That is the original Jacob's ladder. Connected with the pineal gland is a nerve called the pingala. In secret writings, this nerve crosses the spinal cord at the base of the skull in the medulla oblongata and follows down the right side of the spinal cord to its end. Likewise, connected with the pituitary body is the nerve ida, which crosses the spinal cord at the same place the pingala crosses, follows down the left side of the spinal cord to its base. Here, the two nerves converge into a body through the semiluna ganglion, where they merge into the solar plexus. The divine essay, which has been differentiated by entering these two glands, has become Mary and Joseph, the mother and father of the Holy Child. This material, this actual substance, enters the solar plexus, where it combines with the Holy Breath, and the seed is born. The bread is made, which is intended to be eaten in the Father's kingdom. The first seed is formed in the solar plexus of every individual, commencing at the age of 12, which we have designated as the age of puberty. Therefore, it is formed every 29 and a half days, this taking place in each individual at the time of the month where the moon is in the sign in which the sun was at the birth of the individual. Another side note, the word moon is where we get the word month, because the original calendars were not solar, they were lunar and more accurate. So every time the moon went through its whole stage of, of waxing and waning one time, which is 29 and a half days, that was one moon or one month. Herod, Pharaoh, the passions, desires, and emotions seek to slay this divine babe. In the Bible, we find the statement, Joseph shall have a double portion. Joseph was one of the children of Jacob, which means circle in Hebrew. His name was afterwards changed to Israel, so that the sons of Jacob are also the sons of Israel. The signs of the zodiac are also referred to as the children of Jacob, and when applied in physiology, refer to the solar plexus and the 12 forces centered there. So Jacob is, the word Jacob in Hebrew means circle, so we see that the zodiac is a circle. All the forces which enter the body of man are received in this part of the body and are sent out from there. Joseph represents one of these divisions or centers, and this is one of his portions. The other is the pineal gland, that also being Joseph. Thus, all the so-called tribes referred to as Gad, or Reuben, Levi, etc., refer to the forces operative in the human body and not the bodies of people. We find then that the seed, fruit, fish, bread, and savior born in the solar plexus. We must lift up, save, or raise the seed. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. John 12, 32. It must be taken into the spinal cord, or, in other words, be baptized of John. It must be anointed with oil. We find that there is oil present in the spinal cord. No other explanation, save a physiological one, can make clear the statement of Jesus, and greater things that I do, ye shall do, for I go unto my Father. The first seed that has been saved, apparently, makes the statement. When the first seed is saved, the entire body is changed. It vibrates at a higher rate. The fluids are purer. In 29 and a half days, another seed is born, and the material from which the seed is formed is of a more refined substance, of greater power. Therefore, when it is crucified, is it not the greater power than the first seed? The third seed will also have been raised to the third power, and so on. The entire body is changed by the raising or saving of each seed. Paul says, Ye are transformed by the renewing of your minds. The mind, the brain, is indeed renewed by each seed that is carried unto the pineal gland with the accompanying oil.